Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mangs, and I welcome you guys to part two of Let's Play Civilization V, a brave new world playing as Pedro of the Brazilian Empire. Let us continue our journey. So, in the last part, we discovered three leaders, Gustavus Adolfus, Dido, and Shaka. All three leaders who, are, who I am pretty familiar with. And we are now going to be founding our second city. And that is going to be the city of... Uh, Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo? Paulo? Again, man suck at pronunciation. Um, so now we need to think about what we actually want to get. Um, I think anything that gives me production would be worthwhile here. So I'm actually going to be working on a watermill and then I'm going to be... Getting myself some more spices, which I'm going to be trading away for either gold or, you know, something else. Uh, and I'm actually going to be getting myself a shrine, maybe? I'm actually not sure what I should be getting here. Prob I'm probably going to buy the library, truth be told. You know what? I'll go for a watermill. Watermill is always decent. Extra food and production always helps a uh, city. Especially in the early game. <laughs> what did I tell you guys? Dido, a fucking backstabber. Hey, do you want to fight my enemies for me? Yeah, they're going to fight. It's absolutely 100% sure. Think about Shaka. What I like about Shaka, he seldom asks. He's just like, I want to attack this guy, and then he just does it instead of asking people to help him. Shaka just wants all the fun for himself. Alright, I'm going to be working on the spices tile that is actually uh, on the other side of the river in fear of these horsemen. I really should be getting myself a couple of... Uh, Composite Bowman's probably won't be that great. Actually, Rio de Janeiro is actually on a uh, jungle or a hill tile, so it might be good. Ooh, who's this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Ducius Maximus. Oh my god, this is this is this is actually pretty cool. So we have fucking Ducius Maximus, Shaka and Dido together. Like that can never end well at all. Uh, Ducius Maximus. If you don't know what uh, what Alexander does, Alexander is very good at being a proper and utter douche at everything he does. He uh, has the most denunciation willingness. No, fuck off. He has. He's the most willing leader to denounce in the game. I have literally gotten denounced on turn three by Alexander before. <laughs> Alexander has become a nuisance. Don't worry, he's gonna attack. The bad thing about this is that uh, Shaka has two very close neighbors. And the worst case scenario right here is that he could simply end up declaring war on both of them. That can definitely happen. So, hmm, yeah, it's not great. It could potentially be really bad. If he conquers both Athens and Hippodegius, then he might as well just become a runaway AI. Call damn it, there are a lot of barbarian ships over here. Anyway, fuck this horseman. It's actually being very annoying. I guess we could go for a farm. Farm is good. It's on a plains tile next to a river, so might as well. Alright. So, it would be really good if we could get the chicken pizza wonder. But I'm not gonna... I'm not too overly optimistic, because we need a lot. Actually, we do have drama and poetry, so... We could start building it in like... Okay, that's nice. We could start building it in 11 turns. Actually, no, we need... We need civil service first, so... Make that 33 turns. Three, 32 turns, I think. Yeah, my Mang's math, not the best math in the world, I'm afraid. Oh, wow. Sao Paulo is actually getting attacked by barbarians. Never a good thing. Although, the fact that the city is under attack does nothing. You don't get less happiness or anything like that. But if the city does go to half health, the barbarians sack your city, steal all your gold, and I do believe you lose uh, citizens as well. So, that is not a good thing. Alright, so there can still be three religions founded. We have 180 faith. So, with any luck, we should be getting our religion in a minimum of 20 turns. So, let's hope we get it. I think I should probably build a Composite Bowman just to go and clear out some encampments. I should have a Composite Bowman in each of these two cities. So we'll see what I do. Let's go here. Let's see what's over here. Who is this? I don't recognize this color. 
Although, being colorblind, I don't recognize most colors, I guess. But I certainly don't recognize this one. What is that? It's like a whitish color. Who could that be? Hmm. Wait, what? Jengish Khan? I haven't met him, but he's there. Because <laughs> you see cities, you see, when they pop up, but you don't necessarily meet them until you actually meet one of their units. Well, that is interesting. Alright, so let's grab ourselves some composite bowmen. We should get two at least. And thanks to Oliarchy, we can keep them in our cities without actually paying uh, income. I mean, maintenance. Our next policy will be grabbed in five turns. That's going to be our tradition finisher. We need to think about what kind of city we want to settle next, I think. Um, God, there are a lot of barbarians here. I am perhaps... Oh! Who, that, was that, that was Pocatello, wasn't it? It could be Pocatello. Oh, fuck. That is not a good thing. Yep, it's Pocatello. That is definitely Pocatello. Let's see where he is. Well, you, he kicked my ass in uh, my China Let's Play. Uh? So let's see where he is. He is over here. So it's... No, this is... Is this... Is this his... Yeah, I think it is. I can't see the difference between the borders, but then again, colorblind. Hmm. Oh my god, there are actually a lot of barbarians attacking my city. Alright, so Pocatello is in this game. That is rather annoying, because he settles a lot of cities, and as a result it can be a little bit difficult to become influential over him. Also, I should have gone for Parthenon, actually. I almost never go for that wonder. But you do get a great work of art and four culture from it. It's actually a pretty good wonder. Hmm. Oh well, let's go get the camp. Uh, we need to heal up our scouts. I don't want to be... Oh my god, that's a lot of barbarians. I don't think Sao Paulo will be sacked, but it's actually a little bit scary. Yeah. Gustavus Adolphus has completed Terracotta Army. That can make him slightly terrifying. I feel sorry for Genghis Khan. I don't know, Genghis Khan very seldom becomes a powerful lord. He usually gets beaten pretty quickly. Uh, although, Keshiks are really fucking good. I just never see Genghis Khan playing a good game among the AIs. I don't think the AI properly knows how to play him. The greatest strength about Keshiks... Yeah, I'm sure you want to attack Alexander. The greatest strength about Keshiks is that they are extremely good at taking cities because they get their promotions so darn quickly and they can move and fire. So you can move in, shoot, and then move back. And when they get logistics or plus one range, they just become absolutely beastly. Alright, so now we have monarchy. So now all of our cities will grow much quicker. We get that aqueduct. Everything's going to go very nice from here on out. So I can unlock commerce. I mean, what am I talking about? Aesthetics? No. Um, you could certainly go a few points into piety. But I think I want to finish aesthetics as quickly as possible because there are a lot of really good tenants here. Being able to construct monuments, amphitheaters, opera houses, museums, and broadcast towers 50% faster is insanely good. And of course, fine arts lines up very well with the fact that we're going to go for a lot of happiness. Uh, we want the 50% excess happiness added to our culture pool. And this, these composite bowmen really need to go up to Sao Paulo because holy shit... I'm almost regretting not going a point in honor by the looks of how many barbarians there are here. I could actually get myself a very nice culture boost from all these barbarians. But no, I'm gonna go commerce. It's too good. And uh, there's a lot of... Oh, hello there. Okay, that's actually a little bit bad. We could hope that the barbarians go for our workers instead of pillaging the farm. Because we will definitely be able to kill them. Ah, uh, actually, come to think of it, they will heal themselves. Uh, that's bad. Yeah, they're gonna pillage the farm and then capture my workers. They will. Actually, no, they didn't pillage. I think barbarians are limited to one action per turn. I think that's how they work. I don't think they can pillage and move. And we gotta be very careful that we actually move on the workers and not attack them. This is... Ha! Of course we're not gonna return the worker. It's our worker. What are you talking about? But yeah, I, I think barbarians simply just can't do multiple things in a single turn. I think that's just how they're designed so as to not be too scary. 
because that would make them very, very dangerous. Like, Barbarian Horsemen, they could, like, pillage four tiles in a single turn if they wanted to. Which would make them absolutely unstoppable. Also, I think the music is a little bit low. I'm not sure if you guys agree. The music is so beautiful in this game. Of course, when the drums aren't looping for, like, two hours. Which can definitely end up happening every now and then. Alright, so look how quickly our cities are growing now. Sao Paulo is already pop 3. This is thanks to the tradition opener. And once we get our watermill, it's going to be even better. Alright, warriors can continue. It doesn't look like we'll get much farther here. Shoot down that, and shoot down the warrior. Always good. We could, of course, let the composite bowmen do the killing, but I really just want to rid ourselves of these barbarians as quickly as possible. Since we're not going the honor opener, we don't really need the culture from them, so... We can just kill them. Alright, so now I think I'll send my composite bowman up to Sao Paulo. We're done with the camp, that's great. Let's go and... Oh, we can actually just build a road really quickly. Maybe we should just do that. Oh, maybe we can go through here. That looks like we might be able to do that. And our scouts are finally healed up, so let's go and see what Pocatello is up to. He could definitely expand towards here. You guys have seen how quickly Pocatello grabs lands. That could certainly be uh, be a thing. Mm, yeah, let's go over here, see what Pocatello is up to. And we could actually just build this road really quickly. I, I see no reason not to, really. Um, it would help us move around a lot quicker between the cities. So I think I'll definitely do that. And there's a lot of rough terrain, so... I'm just going to get this road over with. Of course, we need engineering to actually get the road over the bridge. Uh, get a bridge over the river, I mean. But that shouldn't be too hard. That's what she said. Derp. Alright, now we have currency and we'll get civil service in 13 turns. So we can start working on that wonderful, wonderful chicken pizza wonder. Let's hope we get it. Alright, so what do we want right now? I think... Going for a very early rider skill, this is probably going to be very useful. And I'm gonna be going I'm gonna be go barbarian hunting. We just heal these guys up. Come on. Riga, please. <laughs> we could steal another worker. I think I will. It's most likely under the protection of some city state. Um uh, I think I have to actually declare war on them to see. Yeah, another worker would be nice. I hate building my own workers. It's not under the protection of anyone. Of course, now I get the message that the city-states grow wary, so now I need to be careful. Because you can end up at permanent war with all city-states if you're not careful. And that sucks. That's like, uh... That pretty much loses you the game. To be permanent at war with all city-states, that's never a good thing. Somebody told me how this is pronounced. It's it's apparently pronounced Queen 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 Kareem. Like, as in a queen. I am not your friend. I guess I could perhaps get an embassy with him now. I think he's discovered my capital. But I am actually not 100% sure. Hmm. Yeah, I'm actually not sure. Alright, so I want to grab Barrage this game because there's so much rough terrain. Getting accuracy is utterly pointless. Anyway, let us start shooting on these encampments, and this worker can go back to region and narrow. 11 turns. I should probably escort it. I can at least scout ahead and see if there's any barbarians here. There are city-states here, so shouldn't be a big issue, really. Alright, I did remember to sue for peace. Uh, okay, fine. I'm just gonna sign an embassy with her. She is pretty far away from me. If she marches an army all the way over here through the mountains to declare war on me. I guess joke's on her, so it's fine. So no wars between uh, Shaka and Dido just yet, but don't worry. Like George Martin said in uh, South Park, it's coming, and it's gonna be huge. All right, let's heal up a little bit here, and start shooting on these guys. Does Dido think she can take this encampment with her ship? Is that what's going on here? <laughs> I really don't know what's going on here. 
But I definitely want to get National Epic up as quickly as possible, considering I have the Garden. I'll be getting Great Writers really quickly. And I do have Libraries, and the Great uh, great Library also have a slot for writing, so... Getting a Writer skilled up early game is actually really good. Gives you a lot of tourism and culture, and that's definitely what we're going for. In my previous game, where I attempted to go for a culture victory, I did too much else. Uh, I tried to do multiple things at once. I went for factories and shits, when I really should have been focused on archaeologists. Uh, there's really only one way to properly play a tourism game, and that is to focus on tourism and culture. You know, that's, that's really what you have to do. Of course, you need to build some military units, you need to get some production, and you of course need to go for some tech, but you have to, you have to be really smart with your choices. Alright, so we still have two religions that can be founded. It looks like we'll get a religion, and Gustavus Adolphus went for the Great Wall. It's a wonder he really likes to build. I don't really know why. He's, a, an, a, he's an aggressive leader, but he loves building defensive wonders. He usually also gets the Red Forge, the Kremlin, the Brandenburg Gates. These are wonders I usually see him snipe. So, we haven't met Jingish Khan yet, but we might very well soon. We'll see. So Pocatello knows where I am now. I guess I could just get an embassy with him then. Um, I hope he has some close guys that can keep him a little bit in check. Hello, Cape Town. How are you on this day? Doing well, I trust. Uh, Alright, we have an embassy with Pocatello. <laughs> Alright, let's sign a let's let's sign an embassy agreement with oh, Gustavus Adolfus. Cool. Might as well. He's probably still a little bit pissed for us, uh, Attacking a city-state, I can imagine. Alright, so now, six turns until we can build the chicken pizza wonder. What should we grab in the meanwhile? Probably a granary. And we can also get that caravan very soon. Uh, although we ha really have no one to trade with at the moment. But yeah, granary is good. There's a lot of bananas. And I do believe granaries just add plus one food on banana tiles immediately. I'm pretty sure they do, at the very least. Now, we could certainly... I really hope those are not unemployed citizens. That has to be a graphical bug. What the fuck? Are you kidding me right now? Unemployed... It's because I have the goddamn city on production focus, that's why. Anyway, um... You could certainly place two, uh... You could place two specialists right here to get a lot of culture, and it would grab you a great writer insanely quickly. Yeah, this is actually my fault. I had unemployed citizens there because I set the city to production focus. That happens every now and then. It's not the end of the world, though. We just had it for... <laughs> 20 turns or something like that. Anyway, yeah, I think this is normally something I don't do, but I think since I am going for tourism, I think having two uh, specialists in this guild is going to be very good for me. I'm going to get my first writer in 12 turns, which will give me a nice pool of uh, tourism and culture, which is, all, which is why I also want uh, a National Epic, but I definitely want uh, the uh, Chicken Pizza Wonder first. And it will line up pretty well with my granary too, so that's great. Let's see, where's my worker? Uh, there's my worker. It looks like it'll arrive safely, so that's good. And I will continue my road. Now, at the moment, my composite bowman is down hunting barbarians, but I think I should be good here. Now I have barrage, that's good. And the road will finish in one turn. That will give me a little bit of gold. And should I buy another settler? I certainly could. Barrage, that's good. So that's the end of that. And we could certainly kill these. Keep exploring. See what we can see. So, I don't know why I moved my scouts like that. I think I want to send them down here. See what I can see. See what I can find. Meet some new leaders. Alright, cool. So, the roads are complete. Now, I could certainly expand here. It's not a terrible expansion. It's not the best, but it's not terrible either. We also have some options. We could expand over here. This is actually not such a... We could get a canal city on top of these horses. Hmm. 
Hmm. You know what? That's actually not a very bad idea. Canal cities are very good. If you don't know what a canal city is, it's basically a city where ships can move through. So, essentially, since ships can move through cities, if I settle a city on top of the horses, then the ships can move through this uh, canal right here. Which allows you to move ships in places where they otherwise couldn't be moved. And it allows to get trade routes you normally wouldn't get. It allows your naval army to move like around. Instead of moving all the way around here, they can just go through here. So it would perhaps allow my capital to trade with um, Pocatello if he has any coastal cities, for example. Just to name a few examples. All right, let's grab ourselves some more spices. Let's found the religion of Mangsism. A little bit late, but you know, better late than never. And what do we want in the religion of Mangsism? Well, Tithe is always great. You can't really argue with Tithe. And then, I am definitely going to be grabbing cathedrals if they are available. We have pagodas, we have monasteries. But cathedrals looks like they... Yeah, it looks like cathedrals... Looks like cathedrals will not be available. So, we could certainly go for religious arch. It is actually really good in the late game. Five culture and five tourism. Of course, the hermitage is usually available very late, but it's still something I'm considering getting. Also, swords into plowshares. Really good. I think I'm actually going to grab this one. We want to be avoiding wars, and 15% extra growth in our cities, even if it gets ruined occasionally by wars, is still insanely good. Because it just basically means your cities will have 15% extra food, and that is ridiculously good. These brutes could actually cause some problems for me. I really hope they won't, but they could. Let's see. I could chop some forest tiles, actually, to get the chicken pizza quicker. And I think I will. Like, it would be tempting to complete this farm. Anyway, that's nice. Uh, let us send our composite bowmen back to deal with that brutes. These warriors have been better than any scout I've had. <laughs> anyway, let us start working on the wonder. Let's put our production to, uh, or set our uh, capital to production focus, and let's grab the aesthetics opener. So now you can see our great riders are being earned at a very remarkable rate. 10 points every turn, which is certainly nice. And I think I'm actually going to send these guys back now. And we'll, we'll postpone this uh, camp just a little while, because we actually want to chop down these forests to get some hammers. Because this wonder is actually going to be very important. Uh, I think it's about time we grab philosophy. Getting some temples up certainly wouldn't be bad. We also want to get the National College up as quickly as possible. Uh, also, this, this, this city does not have any production at all. It needs a workshop. Badly. Yeah, it's actually hilarious how quickly it needs a workshop. It's size 5 and it still spends 42 turns to build a water mill. That is pretty pretty goddamn inexcusable. Alright, send our composite bowman up to intercept that and let's chop the forests. Let's see, what kind of tiles are we working here? Mostly jungle tiles, I guess that's fine. But yeah, we can chop our way all the way to chicken pizza. And if we can get that wonder as well, as you can see right now, we have Carnival active. Of course, it doesn't really give us all that much. Actually, it does. It gives us extra bonus towards uh, Great Riders. Oh my god, we're gonna get our Great Riders so insanely quickly now. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god, 14 points, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. That's, that's, that's quick. That is, like, ridiculously quick. Holy shit. Alright, let's shoot these guys. Get away, brutes. We don't want you here. Leave our workers alone, thank you very much. Alright, it looks like... Oh, hello, Mombasa. You're... They're fond of me, for whatever reason. I guess I did some random quests. Alright. So, by chopping down trees, we, we, we essentially earn ourselves one day of production for every forest we chop down, approximately. So, we can chop down... I think we're going to chop down a lot of forest, actually, because this wonder is very important. So, we've chopped that forest. Now, let's chop this one. And I do believe the closer the forest is to the capital, the more production it yields. And here is Monaco, another city-state. 
There is actually a mountain range separating me and Sweden, which is actually fantastic. Like, this map is very well designed for me. That pretty much shuts down any aggression Gustavus Adolfus can mount against me, because he'll have to march all the way around the mountains. He could still do it, but the AI hates marching through city-states, because that gives them so much... Uh, th give them so many penalties. Unless they're, of course, allied with the city-states, in which they will do it. 20 production, and here's our very first great work of arch. I'm a gaucho. Which will give us four tourism. Wow, that's a lot, actually. Huh. For tourism. Oh no, that's because we have ca carnival active, naturally. It's not because the... I thought that was a lot. But yeah, it's naturally because we have carnival. Anyway, let's shoot down that. And uh, oh, I'm really excited to see if I can get this wonder. Um, it usually gets snatched immediately. It's extremely popular. Um, but for me, it will be even better because of my carnival bonus, which is why I'm sacrificing forest tiles to get it. Naturally, I usually never build lumber mills, so it's not something I wouldn't have done anyway, but, you know. Alright, let's see what we can see. Another... Oh, it's Maspa Congo! 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 Ten more turns. Will we get it? That is the big question. And look at this, we're gonna get, like, another Great Rider very soon. And we're gonna actually get the... I, I didn't know the Great Library had a theming bonus. Let's see, what kind of uh, theming bonus does it have? Fuck you, horseman. Let's see, yeah, so... From different eras and different civilizations. That is a really tricky theming bonus to get, actually. Because there aren't a lot of uh, great works of art up for grabs at this stage in the game. Anyway, let's get rid of this uh, horseman. There we go. Away with you, horseman. We don't want you here. Please go home. And right now, I think either theology or... No, actually, we know, you know what? We want engineering because we want bridges over rivers for our road. Engineering is a really good tech to get. After engineering, I think I'm going to go for workshops, actually. I'm sure Shakai solutions, but you have to fight your own goddamn wars, Dido. And then we're going to go for education. Uh, theoretically, we could also rush machinery. To get Brazilwood camps. Actually, I think I'd rather do that. Brazilwood camps are insane. They're absolutely insane. Yeah, we definitely want them. I don't like postponing universities, but on Emperor you can actually do that and not get horribly owned, so I think I will. Alright, let's send these guys back, and we really want to get rid of this barbarian encampment because it's spawning a shit ton of barbarians for us. And I think I will use my next 500 gold to buy yet another settler. Because I'm so busy building wonders, I don't really have the time. And I think I'm going to grab this canal city over here. Uh, we will have two fish tiles, we will have ivory, we'll have two luxuries, two unique luxuries, which is good. It means the city will pay for itself and grant us four extra happiness. And we'll get deer. It's a lot of good... Uh, yeah, this canal city will be amazing. It is decided. Combine must have bases too. Alright, well, it'll be a long walk up here. And I do put myself at risk from a naval attack from Pocatello. But this city will be very easy to defend from the sea, because it would only be attackable from one side, unless an AI somehow manages to sneak an army around from both sides. Or if you get backstabbed and sandwiched. But those scenarios are rather unlikely. So, I think we'll definitely be able to uh, make that work somehow. Alright, let's chop another forests. We're really putting all our eggs in one basket for this wonder. We, I, I really have to get it at this point, because it's not the fact that I'm sacrificing forest tiles, which is not a big deal in itself. It's the fact that I'm not building improvements, and thereby setting myself back quite immensely. I could have grabbed all these three spice tiles by this point, and sold them to civilizations for a ton of money. But instead, I'm using my workers to chop forests. So I really hope I'm gonna get this wonder. Alright, chop, and... Chop. Chop, chop. Sug, sug. Dabu. <laughs> this city has no production. It's it's actually quite hilarious how little production this city has. There goes the Colossus. That's also a wonder that usually gets snatched pretty darn quickly. I bet it's Dido who built that. She loves the Colossus. Rigo desires trade routes. 
We have to start trading with someone at some point, right? Although you don't get science from trading with city-states, which always makes me a little bit sad. But we really have no close trading neighbors, so we have to trade with city-states. Alright, so let us do this. So now, if there is a tie with another AI, then... <laughs> not, not, ch not chicken pizza, come on. Ah, uh, Pocatello. No, Sulu's. I think we got it, because it's the turn of the city-states and no one has grabbed it. Come on, game. Stop this fucking suspense already. Yes! Katun is established at Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza. The settlement of the Itza shall take place there. The Katzal shall come. The Green Bird shall come. Arkantanel shall come. It is the word of God. The Itza shall come. Woohoo! Chich Chichkinitsa. Okay, that's how you properly pronounce it. Whew, all right, that is amazing. So, we'll get increased golden ages, increased happiness, culture, great engineer points. It's all going really well so far, I gotta say. And I do believe that I want some pizza right now, because I am extremely hungry and there's a pizza waiting for me upstairs. Which also means that I'll be making a cut. I hope you guys are enjoying this game so far. Uh, please consider leaving a like and a comment as always. And my name has been Manx. I really love you all. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.